Y'all ain't subscribed yet? Man, like, share, subscribe. Hit that like button right now. All right, shalom, shalom, everybody. Most high Christ blessed. My name is Officer Sugev, and we're out here to bring out the word, to bring out the word of God to our people. We're out here to let people know about the truth of what has happened to us. Let's start with John 8 and 32. This is the book of John. John chapter 8, verse 32. Bring it out. And ye shall know the truth. So it's saying on today's day, you're going to learn the truth. That truth is about our history, our heritage. Why we're in the position that we're in now. Why is it that we're in the slums? Why there's so much bumminess? Why is there so much drug use in these scriptures, in the Bible? What happened to our people? Bring it up. All right. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. So it said, after we give you this nice history lesson about what has happened to us, it's going to help free you from the mental state of captivity here in Babylon. Uh, it's going to help you realize who you are according to the Bible. Let you know that you're a chosen people. Everybody on this corner is supposed to be a special people instead of being on the bottom where we're at now. Uh, Wait, read it again. And then go to uh, talk. John chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So, that truth making you free is letting you know right now we are in captivity. That is a very hard thing to learn when we think that America is so great. We think that because we can go out here and walk back and forth across the street that we're free. In reality, we're not. Let's get what the truth is. It's all. Psalms chapter 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. So the scriptures say that God's righteousness is everlasting above all things else. It's going to outlast our jobs, our communities, everything. And thy law is the truth. So now thy law is the truth. Right? Come on, talk to us. Come on, talk to us, bro. Got a question for you, right? You say you believe in Jesus. So I'm going to ask you, if you believe in him, you should know what he looks like, right? Yeah. All right, what would he look like? First of all, what's your name? Tony. Tony, my name's Sagia. Nice to meet you. So what would Christ look like according to you? Well, according to me, he's like a nice person. He's a nice person? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so if you don't see looks, if you don't see how he looks, then how would you know what Christ you would be praising or worshiping to if you don't know what he looks like? Okay. All right, look. Let's get, we're going to get that real quick. I want you to look over here, right? See these two right here, right? Yeah. So, first of all, how did you grow up in school or in your family? Was it Catholic, Presbyterian? Did you not go to church or what? Uh, Catholic. Catholic. Uh, okay, Catholic. so you was taught this thing yeah. in the Catholic church, right? So subconsciously, you're thinking that's what Christ looked like. Yeah. That's not the case, all right? And saying that he's a nice guy, also not the case, awesome. right? So let's get a little bit of history on what Christ looks like. Revelations. Chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So first of all, just to give a little history, this here is a book written by John the Baptist. Revelation means the revealing. So he's revealing what Christ looks like, okay? Revelation chapter 1 verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So now he's saying the first tip, his head and his hairs are white like wool, okay? When you look at this, is his hair white? Is it wooly? Hey, hey. So then the, the Catholic look of what Christ looked like, it's already done. Hey, bro. Right? Hey. That's right here. Go ahead. His head and his hands were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. So now it's saying his eyes were as a flame of fire. That's something that happens to our people when we drink wine, you get the red eye look. When you're out in the sunlight, when you're real stressed, you get that red eye look to your, to your face, right? Once again, that's the second strike against this picture. Now we're looking more and more like this picture right over here, right? We got woolly hair, red eyes, right? Keep going. And his feet like unto fine brass. So now he's saying his feet is like unto fine brass. So now he's giving you a description of his hair, his eyes, that shows his face. Now it's saying his skin color. It's like fine brass. When you look at brass, what color is brass? It's a brown color, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit darker than what we are. Bring it but it goes a step further than that. As if they burned in a furnace. So he's saying his feet are like, they're a color of brown, but as if it burned in a furnace. Right. So what would that mean? As if burned in a furnace, right? Yeah. So if you burn something, what color does it become? 
Exactly. That's right. That's this one right here. That's right. That's why I say it's important for you to know what he looks like. It's important for you to have that idea. So you can't say, oh, I don't see color. You have to. Right. But it's inevitable. We're not colorblind. Right? No. That lets you know. If you know what this looks like, that changes your whole mentality. Right. That's because right. then, I'll ask you another question, right? What nationality are you? Okay, so if you're Mexican, you grew up in the Catholic Church, that means what you're doing is you're celebrating the picture of the conquistadors that conquered you. Right. By, seeing, by looking at this and going and saying, oh, I sinned, let me do some Hail Marys. Father, I have sinned, let me go and do this. Or, oh, don't have, uh, you can't wear condoms, don't, don't have kids. Right? No. Those are all things that this man teaches you. That's right. When in reality, this man teaches you war. Right. That's this right. man over here teaches you to be about your people. Right. He teaches you don't go out there and have sex with multiple women and have all these kids. Have one wife. Have a lot of kids with one wife. Right? Mexicans, we got they have that hard working drive. Right? That's one of their examples of what happened to them. Get Genesis 49. We're gonna give you some examples of that to let you know. The things and traits that you have is all given to you scripturally. Right. Right? Like I said, knowing what they look like, keep that in mind. Because everyone in the Bible looks like this. You know? Looking like this was a curse according to the Bible. That's right. That's right. So when your people got conquered, when they got thrown in slave trades, when they got beaten and killed in groups of 12 and 13 or more, that was by this man. Right. right. This is the man that's raping and robbing your people today. Right. The one that says your pesos isn't worth it. Right. The ones that say, hey, all of this area was owned by the Mexicans, was owned by the Native Americans, right. but I'm going to buy it in something called the Louisiana Land Purchase, Come and then on. I'm going to put barriers and walls up and say your people aren't worth it. Right. That's on, this man. That's why you got to know who you're looking at. Right. Go ahead and read Genesis 49. Genesis chapter 49, verse 14. Get out. Issachar is a strong ass. So he's saying Issachar is a strong, he's comparing you to a work animal. He's saying you have a strong mentality, but you're also hard-headed. You don't want to listen. We're so caught up in the Catholic way of life, right? Our grandparents, your great-grandparents, they passed down the rosaries. Right. Those are not things that was given to your people. Right. Go ahead. Issachar is a strong ass, couching down between two burdens. So he's saying you're going to be caught between two burdens in life. That is where you are positioned in the Americas. You're caught between a burden of South America, where you can't go to because of gang violence, embargoes, all these different borders, and you're caught between North America. Right. They don't want you up here either. They want you to have the worst jobs ever. Then they want to complain about you doing that job and kick you out. Right. That's right. a curse, bro. That's what this man brought to you. Right. Get that in Deuteronomy 28. Because all it is, the, all of this is lies. Every single picture up here, you see this, this here is a white man that posed. This is a gay white man that posed and said, I'm going to be Christ. Right. They killed him. Then they said, if you follow him, we're going to kill you too. Right. That's what happened. That's how you got to this point right now. Exactly. That's a form of slavery. Right. See, because you already know, right? This man don't speak your language. He don't know what you're saying, and yet for some reason, that's in all the churches. Right. That's in and everybody that's on that sign, that photo is taught to them in every single church that they go to. When you look at the blacks and the, the Hispanics, we celebrating the same person. Right. The same devil is who they taught to both of us. They had us both in slavery. They would have stepped further and said, even though the Bible says you're one people, I'm going to put you against you and say y'all are two different people. Right. right? But Christ doesn't say that. Right. In fact, get a. Uh, the Lord is the man of war. Get that one. Because we hear that, like you said, Christ is not a soft that's person. Right? You know what's that? Yes. All right. Saying that Christ is not a soft person. When Christ taught, people dropped dead from fear. Right. right. All right. We use a microphone out here so that you can hear us. They can hear us across the street. Christ was able to do that with just his voice. Right. Christ, they say his voice is as many waters. That's he has no right. fear. Right? This man, soft spoken. TV, Joel Osteen, right. all of that stuff. Right. That's not how Christ was. Right. The Bible says complete opposite. They said Christ tore war. Christ beat people for breaking the law. Right. Christ tore down a whole temple because they was in there selling things, making money on the Sabbath, right. breaking the commandments. That's not the Christ that we're taught. Teach. We have to come back to that now. Right. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 3. Bring it out. The Lord is a man of war. So first of all, the Lord is a man. 
It's no confusion. We know right now they say in America June is Pride Month. You right. can be whatever you want. That's right. this man. Right. I'm going to be soft and wear a dress. That's this man. Right. This man over here is about business. Right. He's good on business. See? He's for war. Right. If he said don't commit fornication and you committed fornication, you died. Right. That's this man right here. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family.